Good afternoon, Jason Phillips from Auto Appraise, AutoAppraise.com, 800-301-3886. I'm out picking on a 1970 Challenger convertible today. Car was originally top banana yellow, FY1 I think, repainted FC5 red, black stripes longitudinal stripes were added that's not part of the trim tag stripes are not you know cleared over a few little rough edges on both sides that you can kind of see where they pulled the tape off the car has a few uh, small cosmetic paint uh, abnormalities nothing nothing horrible for a good looking driver quality car small little uh, spots of lifting a few small uh, various chips in locations that were marked out with over 200 photos a little bit of uh, fish eye uh, contamination below the door handle there the worst um, components of the body as far as magnetic adhesion goes we have some rock chips here while I'm standing in front of the wheel opening there's a little bit of bubbling on the dog legs of the fenders can you see it got still photos of all this for the prospective buyer and some rock chips there that you would expect. A uh, magnetic adhesion is pretty good here and in the door corners with a little bit of bubbling though in the, some filler in the door corners. Uh, coming down here a little bit of bubbling down low. The purchaser of this vehicle or potential purchaser he will see the video first before any of you will see it eventually launched uh, publicly. There's some more bubbling he makes his decision then if the car doesn't meet the grade for him uh, then I'll launch the video so other people can see it the car is a pretty good looking car it's got a few waves here's a few more fish eyes up in the paint here very difficult to discern on video or on photos you got to be three or four feet away to see them but looks uh, pretty good shooting down both sides the waviest portion would be down low in the passenger door. There's a few waves right in here that could have got blocked out just a little better. Sticking them onto the body while we're here. The car shoots nice and straight down. As a, as a general glance, it looks good. Wheel opening moldings, they fit nicely. Tail panel fits nicely down here in the quarter dog leg a little bit of waving going on some bubbling here and here in that quarter panel overlap seam here we've got a crack in the paint where this patch in the bottom of the quarter broke loose um, but no real obvious indication that there's filler there other than that uh, crack a little bit weaker magnetic adhesion right in this area on both sides. Digital paint meter didn't pick up any readings right in this area, but outside this area we did okay, 3.5. Right above it, 11.5. And there's a little bit of filler going up into here. So probably expected lower areas. In this quarter panel there's a little puddling, pooling or shrinkage. And again, difficult to discern by photo or video. You really have to study the car to see it. A casual glance at four or five feet away, it's not, um, not really an issue by most standards. Well, I'll get into the trim in a minute. So finishing up around the body and looking at the paint, the paint's got a subtle amount of orange peel. You can read the emblem in my coat from about 12 to 15 inches away. You can see it's there, but not necessarily uh, clearly read it. A few small little contaminations again in various uh, locations, small chips. A little bit heavier orange peel in some areas. But you can see the reflection of the houses and the vehicle behind me there. And overall, it's got a very nice 
local showable uh, appearance. I'm picking on it a little bit because that's what the buyer wants to know, the worst case scenario. On the hood, flat surfaces, there's a few little pings here, ping, 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 almost like hail damage. It doesn't really jump right out at you, but once you start looking for it, then you kind of see it. Hood lines are really nice, deck lid lines are nice. I'm going to hop under the car before it gets any darker and, uh, and rattle through the floor pans and the frame rails and the suspension. The grill looks to be in very nice shape, there's no big cracks. Uh, the egg crate is in good condition. Headlight bezels show nicely while I'm up here in the front. And while I'm in the front, I might as well hit this. The bumper fits nicely. Chrome plating's in good shape. There's some marks in the chrome on top of the front bumper. But fit-wise, it fits the car pretty nicely. If it ever got shoved in in the center, it's really minimal. Got pretty good gaps and lines going around. This car was equipped with the SE uh, trim package on the fender tag. So it's got all the belt moldings. And the trim uh, is certainly very presentable. This rubber belt molding here, the sweep on the door, is cracked and chipped. It could stand to be replaced. This quarter panel, our quarter window uh, rubber molding is a little bit deteriorated at the top. The heavier stage two patina on these back, uh, on this back convertible surround trim compared to the belt moldings on the doors. Uh, trim uh, pitting inside the door handles. Wheel moldings again, or wheel openings fit nice. A little bit of stage one pitting on the side marker bezels. Rear bumper's in nice shape. Rectangular ported exhaust tips are in nice shape. There's some cosmetic streaks on this bumper. We tried to polish those out while I was here. Uh, they, they clean up a little bit. Maybe they'd clean up some more, but we didn't have success getting them off fully. A little bit of plating fade on the bumper in two spots. Uh, flip gas cap is in really good shape. Go wing was added. That's not part of the fender tag options. And I guess we'll cover the glass really quick while I'm up here. There's some hairline scratches. It was an original air conditioned car, no longer equipped. Does have the interior gut stuff. This doesn't have the underhood equipment. Glass is fairly clean and clear. A few roller hash marks. Boom, boom, boom here where some of the guides are worn. This windshield's a replacement unit. It is an original style shaded Easy Eye uh, windshield. It's got one bullet right there in the driver's side, but it's out of your view path. It's almost up, up at the sun stripe, so uh, it's not really too much of a big deal. Uh, this can be freeze framed for the client to look at. H6XW, that's that uh, white bucket seat interior. V3W was the white top. Uh, it's a G-code car, that's a 318 car. Originally equipped with a 904 tranny. Uh, steering brakes, it's had a radio upgrade with the uh, plug-in in the ashtray to plug into your iPhone. It does it had AC, but it's in-op. Uh, it doesn't have rally gauges, but it does have an added aftermarket tachometer in the uh, standard uh, blank plate opening looks good. It's got the uh, a simulated wood a rim blow steering wheel added to the vehicle. Uh, the core support stamp was there, the dash VIN is there, the fender tag VIN, the cowl VIN is there, and the um, door sticker VIN is there. Again, the original top banana yeah. yellow 318 car. Okay, a little more information. I want to get under the car before my battery goes out. We've been sitting here for quite a while, probably two and a half hours now. No drips on the pavement, that's really nice. Tranny's in nice shape, bottom of the engine and suspension are in nice shape. There's an upgraded idler arm, pitman arm rather, and cleaned up suspension, newer links. It's had upper tubular arms added to it. But getting down to the floor pans where we're really concerned most is, uh, it's looking nice. The wheel splashes are in good shape.
The pinch welds along here are in a nice solid shape. I don't see any evidence of die holes uh, pulled or torqued open or cut open. Dual aluminized exhaust with an H pipe. Uh, the floor pans look the same on the right as they do on the left. There really isn't any difference. These torque boxes are standard on a convertible and, uh, and Hemi cars. And they're in good shape. You can see some evidence of yellow paint st still from the original car. Original color. Some of that sound deadener that's sprayed on there is peeled back. But um, didn't see any obvious cuts or patches again. So floors were in nice shape. These are the original grooved style uh, wheel opening moldings. Those are pretty cool. Still have the car jacked up in the front. Uh, no evidence of compression along these uh, front frame rails. The K member is in uh, nice shape. Disc brake uh, front end, 1970 uh, power brake car. The suspension's all in very good shape. And again, the rails all look nice. Both sides are the same. No evidence of tears. Uh, inside the fender splashes uh, looks very good. And again, those rails, there you go. Rails are in nice shape, die holes are in nice shape. Another shot at the wheel splash on that side. Lower front valance fits nice. Marker lights show just a little bit of age cracking. Uh, nothing, nothing horrible. And again, in these areas of bubbling, I used business card magnets and I used uh, this digital paint meter. I'm ahead of the right rear tire right now. So there's a little bubbling going on, but the majority of the panels have good um, business card magnetic adhesion. A little bit more bubbling right down here along the bottom of that quarter line.